Today we're checking out what's new at the Memotion booth here at CES. A huge thank you to Memotion for sponsoring this video. Some of the awesome new features in their robots are a drop and mow feature where you can simply set it down, push mow, and it will be able to instantly mow any yard. You now have LiDAR built into some of these and you can even use them without an RTK. That's crazy, let's get started. Now here at the Memotion booth, they're talking all about how they're the world's number one robot mower and I've tested out a bunch of them, but they're also introducing some of their new uh, pool cleaners, which I will check out in just a bit. But first, let's start right here with the new Luba 3. Now this has a very similar design, what we've seen before. They've added a few different guards to the little wheels here, but the biggest change here is the new LiDAR sensor on top. So this is going to be using what they're calling a tri-fusion system. So it has the LiDAR, which can see up to 60 meters away to be able to detect where it is. But if it can't see that, it can default back on the RTK system um, or coming soon to the US, they'll have net RTK. So you will be able to use RTK um, over the network instead of just a antenna. And then they have the AI vision where then it will also use that to be able to see where it's going. So no more is it going to be stopping just in the middle of nowhere because it doesn't understand, but it's using the combination of those three different systems to navigate where it actually is and then be able to quickly and efficiently mow your lawn. Now, one of the big reasons you're gonna go with the Luba 3 is because of how much it can get done in such a short amount of time and if we take a look here at the bottom you can see it has a new design to more efficiently eject the grass so that it doesn't get caught up underneath the different blades and then it is able to get that out and here it does a pretty good job right up next to the edge cutting all the way to the edge now this is an all-wheel drive device so that means each wheel individually has power and it can go up a slope of 36 percent let's check that out so here's the Luba 3 going down a 80% slope or a 38.2 degree decline or incline. So that is awesome. It's able to grip onto the grass and be able to go up there. Now they've also talked about how their improvement, if it is going the other direction, how it's able to keep a straight line going through to cut your entire lawn. And heading back up, let's now see how it does with the incline. There you can see this is AstroTurf, but no problem being able to go from the flat all the way to that 80% slope. And there my camera is level, so you can see how steep that is. Handling it with that all-wheel drive, no issues. Now here in this area, this is their drop mode demo. So you can take this, as long as you have a charged battery, you can place it on any lawn, hit start, and it will be able to automatically mow the lawn. Now, some of the models I talked today, they will have the LiDAR, but some do not have the LiDAR, and they are using their own AI vision to be able to see where it is going. So it can map your lawn and mow your lawn even without that RTK connection, which is pretty cool. Um, it's almost as good as the full LiDAR, but then you have the LiDAR that is the most accurate that you can get. So that's gonna be really nice that you can take it to a neighbor's lawn, show them how it works on their own lawn, and then it can delete that as soon as you take it away. So really cool that they've added that quick mow feature. Now here's a closer look at the blades on the bottom. So when we start this up, it takes a second here, but you can see how fast these are able to turn to be able to cut your grass. So as it's going, it's being very accurate and cutting, and you have a nice clean cut in the end, now it is using a ton of blades here to be able to do that, but it can do a large area. Now there are a few different models now with the Luba 3, so you'll be able to cover pretty much as much area as you need. And over here we have the all-wheel drive, so all wheels spinning independently to be able to navigate around your yard to get to those tough to reach areas. Now, of course, the biggest change is the LiDAR integrated into the mower. So here they have a demo where you can see what this LiDAR is seeing. So see that red object in the frame there? So that right there, that is me. And as I move, you're gonna be able to see that move. And it's not only just one LiDAR light, but it's an array of lights. So you're able to see this more 3D-like map so it can understand the different objects and things that are in its way that it needs to navigate around and where it needs to go to be able to quickly and easily finish your lawn. Now you can see it even knows that my camera is in my hand. That's pretty crazy. And here's a look at the different lawns that this is able to cut. So if you're in a cooler climate with fescue, perennial, or Kentucky bluegrass is gonna work great, or in warmer climates like with St. Augustine, Zoysia, I don't know what that is, and Bermuda. So there's gonna be no problem with whatever grass you have. 
Now, to be able to process all of that different info that's getting from the LiDAR and the other antenna and vision system, it has a new chip which can do 10 tops of data to be able to process all that's going on to have a more accurate navigation on your lawn. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Luba 2 and what is new. Now this model right here is very similar to what we saw last year, but this is the Luba Mini 2 all-wheel drive 1000. Now it has a few new features that are really cool, but this has everything we saw on the Luba 3 with the all-wheel drive, being able to go up those steep slopes and navigate around. Now they have um, talked about how they're going to update the vision system eventually with LiDAR, but no model like that is available. Now they've also used this 3D LiDAR vision module on some of the models, but the biggest thing I wanna talk about is on the bottom. So if we pick this up, we have this new edge cutting feature. So one of the main issues with the Luba is you have the blade disc in the middle and it can't get right up next to the edge, but with the edge cutting underneath, it can turn this on when it's doing the boundary around the outside of your lawn to be able to have that really close cut as close as it can get to the edge. There may just be a tiny bit left over, but this is definitely what I needed on my Luba Mini to be able to fully cut the yard and have a really pristine cut look. And for the Luba Mini, they also have a 1500 model. So that's gonna cover your 0.37 acres. And then here we have some of the other features that are built into that. So really great upgrade there. But now let's head to the Yuka Mini. So there are two different models for the Yuka Mini. We have the Yuka Mini 2 1000, as well as the Yuka Mini 2 600. The difference is the 1000 has the LiDAR on the top here. So that's gonna be able to do the 360 degree LiDAR navigation. And then the 600 model has no LiDAR, but it uses AI vision navigation. So it can navigate around your yard even without the RTK, which is really cool that it's able to do that just with the dual cameras here in the front. It's able to see where it's going, see the lawn and create a map. And this is built mostly for smaller yards. So you're gonna have this on a, a giant yard, but you have a smaller yard where it can complete the task very easily. And here you can see some of the other benefits. It has 360 obstacle recognition, it has that upgraded AI chip, 10 zones, 21 inch path, and so on. Now this doesn't have the edge mowing, so it's gonna be your main smaller lawns where you just need that one little disc in the middle, and you may need to do some edging up against the edge because it doesn't have that edge cut, but I've loved having the Yuka Mini 1 in my yard. It's been a great device. This does have the manually adjusted uh, mowing height on here where the others have had the electronic adjustments. So really great upgrade to all of the Yuka and the Luba models. One more feature that the Yuka and the Luba Mini have is you can swap out the battery so you can take that out and easily take out the battery and put in the new one. And then they've also adjusted the charging pins here on the Luba 3 so it has a little bit better connection there once it gets to the charger. Now let's head into the water. And here's more about the Luba Mini 2 all-wheel drive 1000 and the features it has, the drop mode, the triple camera AI, and that RTK, and then that edge cutting disc for ultra close edge cutting. Now there's also the other model of the Yuka Mini 2 where it does not have the LiDAR. So here it's using the cameras as well, but it's using the tri-camera AI vision. So it's able to navigate and know where it is without having that RTK signal 100% of the time. Now this has a 800 and a 500 model. Last year, my motion gave me a sneak peek of their Spino E1. Now I totally botched the name of the product last year, but it is Spino not spin up. So here we have the E1, we have the S1, but now they have the new S1 Pro. Now this is awesome. What is incorporated in this is a full charging system automatically being able to dock and recover itself. Now here you have the full dock, which can automatically take it from the charging to put in the water. So here it has this mechanical arm that it latches onto the robot. That's how it's holding onto it right now. And then once it has it low enough in the water, it then releases that so that the robot could then begin cleaning the swimming pool. So really cool. This now has an increased size of almost 2000 square feet of a swimming pool that it can do. And some of the other improvements with this is not only can it do um, path cleaning on the floor and doing wall cleaning, but also go horizontal on the wall. And there you can see the brush that he uses and it's suctioning itself down to the floor to have that nice suction cleaning um, that you want to get your pool really clean. Now talking about the dock here is it can be placed on the side of your 
cool depending on how sharp of a line you have there. You can have this wrap around a step or something like that. So there is a gap there. We'll be fully testing this out this year, but really cool that it can then pick up the cleaner and place it here on the charging pin. So let's say it has now gone through the process of cleaning the pool. We can use the app that is easy to connect to and tap home. I also noticed on the back of the charger here, you have those buttons as well. So if you wanna retrieve it, you can easily do that. And it's using a frequency um, from here to the robot. I think it can go about 33 feet. And once the robot detects that, it is then automatically able to know it's gonna come back here and it will reposition itself so then this can automatically pick it up so that it is able to put it back on the charger and dock it and start charging again. One of the most difficult parts about the robot pool cleaners that I've tried before is getting it out of the water, communicating with it. Usually you have to get a pool um, stick to pull it up and then getting it out of the water is really heavy because it has a bunch of water in it, but this is able to do that all on its own without any interaction, which is so cool. The only thing you will need to do is every time it does clean, you'll go and empty the water tank and filter so that it's clean and ready for the next cleaning. So here, let's see this be picked up. So there the Spino S1 Pro was able to get into the dock. There you see the robot arm come down and then it is able to lift that up right out of the water and here we will see all the water drain out without any interaction and that is balanced properly so it's not gonna fall out or anything like that and you can see it smoothly picks it up and it keeps going right until it's done. Now with the auto shore charge system the motion has solved the problem with robot pool cleaners. Really excited to test this out in the real world. And lastly, here we have a giant Luba 3 whip LiDAR. Okay, that's not a real robot, but really cool to see it. They are actually coming out with some commercial applications. Over here, we have the Maston robot. That's a huge robot. Gonna be able to easily have battery swaps and you can then cover 10 acres of area. So that's it for the Motion booth. Really excited for all of these new robots with LiDAR integrated and even the uh, AI vision to be able to navigate around without a complicated setup. So I'm really excited to test these out and even check out the Spino S1 Pro in a pool later this year. So if you have any further questions, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll leave links to these as they become available down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.